Hello, thank you for joining me. We are in day 66 of the Course Companion Reading Schedule with Emily Bennington and Robert Perry. The Course Companion is a group you can find on Facebook or um, if you Google it, you can find it. Emily Bennington, Course Companions. This is day 66, Cameo 17, Bill's Class. I'd like to start with a prayer. If you'd like to join me, please close your eyes. I'll just keep it short and sweet. Dear God, please enable me to set aside everything I think I know about A Course in Miracles, about you, about myself, and about others. Please allow me to have an open mind for a new experience, God. God, I thank you for my many, many blessings. Please give me your vision today. Help me to be a conduit of your love. Help me to be who you would have me be. Do what you would have me do. Go where you would have me go. And say what you would have me say. And to whom, dear God? Thank you. Amen. So this, sec this is Day 66, Cameo 17, Bill's Class. The text section titled The Devoted Teacher, like the earlier Chapter 3 section, The Fear of Teaching, originally addressed Bill's fear of teaching in an upcoming course. The Devoted Teacher is in Chapter 4, Section 2, and The Fear of Teaching is Chapter 3, Section 4. I'm sorry, Section 9. Ken Wapnick explained that there was a class in abnormal psychology Bill was scheduled to teach at the undergraduate campus of Columbia University. Bill always had a morbid fear of public speaking, although he was indeed an excellent speaker. And he was panic-stricken at the thought of this upcoming class. Wapnick went on to explain that Bill subsequently was not able to teach the course himself, but Helen accompanied him and they taught together. Footnote 1, that's from Absence from Felicity, page 261. The following comments come after the end of The Devoted Teacher. They are thus the conclusion of the entire discussion on Bill's class. Bill's course was very carefully chosen because abnormal psychology is ego psychology. This is precisely the kind of content which should never be taught from the ego whose abnormality should be lessened. Your text by teaching, not increased. You, your text Bill, are particularly well suited to perceive this difference and you can therefore teach this course as it should be taught. Most teachers have an, unf an unfortunate tendency to teach the course abnormally and many of the students are apt to suffer considerable perceptual distortion because of their own authority problems. Footnote 2 all quotations without page numbers in this cameo are from Helen's notes. Throughout these cameo essays, we have corrected spelling errors in dictated material for ease in reading. Jesus is claiming here that he very carefully chose Bill to teach the class on abnormal psychology. Abnormal psychology, he implies, is just an extreme expression of the ego, which is inherently abnormal compared to the true normality of heaven. The problem is that most teachers teach the course abnormally. For example, teach it from their own abnormality, from their own egos. And as a result, the class ends up re reinforcing the abnormality in their students. Bill was chosen because he was able to communicate the ego's abnormality from a place outside of it. His way of teaching thereby, 
can thereby lessen rather than increase the abnormality in his students. Thus, in spite of Bill's fear of his inadequacy as a teacher, Jesus is telling him that he was chosen to teach this course because of an unusual strength he has. Your teaching assignment, and I assure you it is an assignment, will be to present perceptual distortion without either engaging in it yourself or encouraging your students to do so. This interpretation of your role and theirs is too charitable to produce fear. If you adhere to this goal, your text role, you will both engender and experience hope. And you will inspire rather than dispirit the future teachers and therapists which I am entrusting to you. Now we can see even more clearly why Jesus assigned Bill to teach this class. Jesus' concern is with the teachers and therapists these students will one day become, and with those whom they will in turn affect. If Bill can teach the class from a standpoint beyond the ego's abnormality, he can inspire these future teachers and therapists with hope for healing rather than drag them down into fear and depression over the inescapable reality of mental illness. And presumably that hope will then flow through them to all the students and patients they themselves will serve in the future. I promise to attend myself and you should at least credit me with some dependability in keeping my own promises. I never make them lightly because I know the need my brothers have for trust. Jesus, however, does not just send a frightened Bill to the front of the class to face the students by by himself. He also promises to attend the class as a show of support for Bill, a statement of his belief in Bill as a teacher. And in case Bill is tempted to think that this promise is just empty words, Jesus says that he does not make such promises lightly. After all, he is a trying to lead Bill and Helen toward a global stance of trust. It is essential then that he is eminently dependable or he will just reinforce their current mistrust. He is not the sort of spiritual teacher who tries to shatter their egos by setting up certain expectations and then frustrating them. Rather, he is holding out to them one relationship in which real trust is possible, as a gateway to a trusting relationship with reality itself. And so when he says, I promise to attend myself, he wants Bill to know that he is not kidding. He will really be there. And now we are going to the course companion notes. Emily Bennington, I'm not sure if this is by her or Robert Perry. It's by Robert Perry. So these notes are by Robert Perry today. Let me just shift here if you don't mind. Thank you for your patience with me. I'm helping you to train in forgiveness. And myself when I listen to this at a later date. Day 66, Cameo 17, Bill's class. This cameo reminded me a lot of the previous one in which Helen was initially reluctant to fulfill her scribal function. From these two cameos, you could easily get the impression that we are often reluctant to step into a genuine calling. The conventional wisdom is that our calling is our passion, that we should follow our bliss. But apparently sometimes our calling represents a buried passion that on the surface we want no part of. I couldn't help but apply the material in this cameo to teaching the course. Assuming it's fair to do that, 
what we get if we do so is something like the following. Certain people have been very carefully chosen to teach A Course in Miracles. They may be reluctant to fulfill this calling, perhaps because they feel they will be placing their self-image at the mercy of the images their students will have of them. But they have been chosen because they are the antidote to the way the Course is generally taught. Most teachers have to go I'm sorry, excuse me. Most teachers have an unfortunate tendency to teach the course abnormally, meaning teach it from the ego. Their teaching, therefore, has the effect of reinforcing rather than lessening the ego in their students. In contrast, the teachers who have been chosen are particularly well suited to teach the course while standing apart from the ego, which will help their students shake loose from theirs. One thing this highlights for me is the importance of the manner in which we teach. Presumably, both Bill and the teachers Jesus is criticizing we're teaching the same basic material, maybe even using the same textbook. But while teaching that material, they were also injecting it into their own personal perspectives. I'm sorry, they were also injecting into it their own personal perspectives. While talking about particular mental illnesses, they were also conveying a larger implicit message and overall framing of those illnesses and their healing. This implicit framing is so important that it ends up making the difference between lessening and increasing the abnormality in their students. It ends up, in other words, making all the difference. Which means that we have to think about what larger attitudes and perspectives we are injecting as we teach the Course. What is the larger message behind our words between the lines? As the manual says, it is all about the teaching underlying what you say. So what is the teaching underlying what we say? Are we given the subtle impression that the ego is all there is, that we are stuck in a prison from which there is no escape? Conversely, are we trying to be so affirming and uplifting that we give the impression that the ego is hardly worth bothering about? In which case, our students will feel superficially uplifted and only later realize that the ego's iron grip has merely tightened. Getting back to the teachers who have been called to teach the Course, it is vital that they answer the call. This is both for the sake of their students and for the sake of those who will be influenced by their students. Bill was teaching future teachers and therapists. Thus, he gave them the implicit message that mental illness is not an inescapable prison. I'm sorry, did I say that right? Thus, if he gave them the implicit message that mental illness is not an inescapable prison. They will be inspired with hope, hope that real healing is possible. And they would then go on to infect hundreds and thousands more with this hope. Surely something analogous, I think I said that right, to this is also true of teachers of the Course. So, if you are one of those people who have been very carefully chosen to teach A Course in Miracles, and if, like Bill, you are reluctant to fulfill this function, you should set next to your reluctance what Jesus is saying here. You should realize you've been chosen precisely because you have the ability to teach the Course from the place apart from a place apart from the ego, which is crucial, since this is the way out of the ego. You have been chosen as the antidote to the way the Course is usually taught. 
Your function, if you accept it, will inspire rather than dispirit the students who are sent to you, and through them will inspire hundreds and thousands more. And in the process of engendering hope, you yourself will also experience hope. And when you get up to teach, you should know that you will not be left alone. Jesus himself has promised that he will attend your classes as a demonstration of his belief in you. And as he says, you should at least credit me with some dependability in keeping my promises. I never make them lightly. Robert Perry Thank you so much for joining with me. Day 66, Cameo 17. Bill's class. And thank you all. I love you. Thank you for joining me on this journey.